Well, good morning. Good morning. It's really nice to chat with you. Yeah, indeed. Um, first of all, can you tell me a little bit about your background? Like, how did you get into this job as, as a spokesperson for such a huge, I mean, it, it seems like a big thing to get into, to be a spokesperson for such a, a, a diverse range of products, I guess you could say. Yeah, uh, well, well, for whiskey, which is essentially my passion, and actually I'm quite lucky, because um, to be able to work, and your, your career is your passion, and it, it means that it sounds cheesy, but no day feels like work, which is nice. Um, so I'm originally from London, but I moved to Edinburgh for university, and I actually started as a cocktail bartender, um, bartending while I was studying for um, four years, completely immersed myself in the spirits industry as a result. Um, and then when I graduated, I thought, well, what am I going to do with my life? I was like, eh, I can move to London, or I could try and get into whiskey. Because by then I'd realized that I had a bit of a soft spot for it, and there was so much an offer mm. in terms of like the sort of the culture and the heritage and production. So um, I kind of delved a bit further into whiskey, and then I I'm a bit of a geek. So I wanted like massive key. So I wanted to learn more, and I ended up doing a second degree in distilling. Mm. Um, so biochem biochemistry and chemical engineering wow. with the Institute of Brigham Distilling, yeah. And then um, here, here I am today. So I, I'm very, I, I, I think I, I have always one of those dream jobs in a way. Mm. So um, I, I'm looking after what the, is this 190 year secret from from the heart of space side that's beloved by whiskey enthusiasts across the world that's never before really been given the limelight like this. Mm. So, yeah, it's, it's incredible. And it means I can come to amazing places like Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's something I wanted to ask too, though, about uh, going back, well, when you were talking about the fact that you took all these, these courses, I mean, that's kind of what I wondered about is how much technical knowledge that you have to have to, to speak for whiskey and to speak for the, the, the brand, basically. I, I don't think you... I, I wanted to learn more because I'd just come out of university and I found the, the category fascinating. Right. And I just wanted to learn more. And I started with one little course uh, that sort of briefly touched on sort of enzymes and bits and bobs and science. Right. And I was completely hooked as a result. Hmm. Um, it's not a prerequisite at all, um, but that was just what, what I found fascinating. Right. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about the whiskey. So this is more like, um, well, it's always almost been like this, this secret, as I, as, as I said before. Um, you speak to whiskey enthusiasts, and they'll tell you that probably sits in their top three distilleries, right. but then they'll say, don't tell anyone, because you can't get your hands on it, because you couldn't really. Before. Interesting. And the, the, the bottlings were sporadic, few and far between. Hmm. And then you speak to any whiskey creator, a whiskey blender, and they'll tell you that Morlick is their secret weapon. It's considered a top dresser in hmm. the blending world. Essentially, it adds to some of the world's finest whiskies body and character and finesse. Hmm. Now, it's from the heart of Speyside, founded in 1823, and it was actually the first legal distillery in Dufftown. Oh, really? In Speyside, yeah. The only distillery there for 60 years. Hmm. And usually when you say the word Speyside, you think of a whiskey, which is, because we have regions in Scotland. Yeah. You, you can separate out sort of your regions, and you can look at sort of flavor associations with each one, just as a general guide. And when you say Speyside, you usually think of whiskies that are quite light, quite sweet, quite floral, quite mellow. But more like it defies all of that. It's always like the wild child of space side distilleries because it creates a whiskey that is thick and rich and chewy and mm. mouth filling and muscular and meaty and savory and umami like and all of those really big juicy buzzwords. Mm. Um, and that comes from a very unique 2.81 distillation process. Mm. And it's because of that that the distiller has been nicknamed the Beast of Dovetown. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So. Um, this year, we're finally giving the distillery the limelight that, mm. it, that it deserves. So we're bringing it out of the shadows to the, to the joys and sort of whoops of whiskey enthusiasts around the world. Mm. And we're launching three new luxury single ones. Nice. Yeah. So what, what do you think people should know then for the people who haven't tasted it before? What's, what's the interesting thing to, to note before you take a, a whiff or a taste? I think for... for 
anyone, before you try any whiskey, before you smell it, just be aware that it's a little bit stronger than what you might be used to normally drinking. Um, so when you are smelling, keep the glass away, and slowly move it in and take small little sniffs at a time. Um, also, I find if you, if you just look at it like whiskey, you know, the word whiskey sometimes you might think that it's just one dimensional, but there's a whole host of flavours. So while you're smelling, think about all of those flavour associations and what you might be uncovering in a glass, just like you would with a glass of, of wine or, or beer. Um, so with Mortley Carrera Old, um, which is this bottle here, you get on the nose these beautiful salted caramel notes. Mm. and rich vanilla cream and sticky toffee pudding and it's very autumnal so you can imagine crinkly leaves underfoot and the great thing about whiskey is you can paint all these pictures with the flavours mm. you know you can you can immerse yourself into it in sort of a, a completely new um, environment mm. more like 18 is in bold it's, it's almost like you're um, Tom Ford, Tuscan leather, um, gentleman's club, big leather armchair, dark chocolate, fireplace, it's got huge coffee notes on the nose and mm. dark chocolate. And so really you can transport yourself into that situation. Right. Yeah. So I think for any anyone looking to go into sort of a whiskey and, and picking that glass up for the first time, let your imagination run wild, you know. And at the end of the day, when you, what you smell that's what you smell. Right. What you taste is what you taste. Because we all have different palates. We all taste and we all smell different things. Mm. And so one person's white chocolate could be another person's rose. Right. Yeah. And at the end of the day, it's, it's fun. Whiskey is, for me, it's something that brings people together. Mm. You know, um, Having a dram with friends, with, with old friends, with new friends. Um, you know, uh, you're drinking it. It's, all of you have come together to try this whiskey and to experience it and let but flavors bounce from one person to another. Mm. Um, and also, it doesn't just have to be drunk neat. On the topic of, you know, neat versus on the rocks versus anything else, how do you think people should start? Do you think they should start neat? Do you think they should start on the rocks? Is it, what do you recommend? It's all personal preference. I don't really say with single malts. Um, Try it neat first, and then add ice or, or water as you require. When you add water, the whiskey becomes sweeter slightly. It releases all those lovely sweet top notes, um, and it lowers the ABV a little bit. Hmm. How much water do you add? Well, it's up to you. But you right. just remember with water, you, you can only put it, you can't take away. So start drop by drop, and right. slowly these new flavors will start to uncover. If you want to add ice to your whiskey, add ice to your whiskey. Um, the reverse actually happens. I don't know if you keep um, a bottle of gin or vodka in the freezer ever. I, I don't personally, okay. but I, I but know people when you who do. do yeah. And you then pour it out, you can see it's got this lovely sort of syrupy, almost like velveteen texture. Right. The same thing happens to whiskey. If you add a big block of ice, it just increases that viscosity and the chewiness and the mouthfeel. Um, drink it in cocktails. Right. I love a Scotch cocktail. Uh, a Rob Roy. Mortley Carrera Old goes really well in a Rob Roy with hmm. um, kind of a rosé vermouth, so oh, yeah. nothing too spicy or overpowering. Um, have it in a Boulevardier, which is essentially a whiskey Negroni, uh, an old-fashioned blood and sand. You know, yes. there's classics, then you've got your modern classics like penicillins, etc. Um, whiskey and soda, right? An incredible way to drink whiskey. Um, highball, ice, whiskey, soda refreshing, incredible, and really all of these different ways to drink it, they bring out different nuances mm -hmm. and they're different drinks for different occasions. You know, it's like anything else. Right. But what's what's really fun about, about the category is that it is vibrant. Mm. You know, it, there's a lot going on there. I, I believe it's one of the most vibrant spirit categories out there and it's mm. versatile. Um, and it's, yeah, it's something that's having its day, it's having its year, its decade, I think. Yeah. Well, then the two questions I wonder about is first of all, what what are your some of your favorites, like in terms of a, a mixed drink and in terms of your favorite actual scotch. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your favorites? Okay, um, mixed drinks. I love a whiskey and soda, as I said before. Uh, yeah. Johnny Walker Black Label and soda with ice is in incredible. Um, 
then I've got quite a, a bit of palette. Mm. Um, I really like aperitif style digestive um, cocktails. So yeah. whiskey, vermouths, I'm a huge fan of sherry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so fortified wine, cherries, um, bitters, uh, amaros, that sort of thing. So mm. usually um, I've actually gone into quite a few cocktail bars in Toronto. You've got an amazing bar scene here. And your bartenders are very, very skilled, and you kind of describe the sort of thing you're going for, and they'll make you something incredible along those lines. Um, but that's just what I like, right. you know. Um, uh, as I said, I love a, a Rob Roy, um, mm -hmm. and, and more like Rare Old goes really well with it. Um, similarly, more like 18, I'd probably, I wouldn't put it in a cocktail, mm -hmm. but I really like having it with like a, a square cube of, of dark chocolate on the side. Nice. Yeah, that's a really nice, uh, really, really easy bit. And that's a whole other window of opportunity is pairings. I mean, yeah. it's amazing what you can pair with whiskey. And yeah. Cook, I mean, there's some, I wouldn't cook with every whiskey, but there's certain whiskeys to cook with even. It's amazing what you can get. Yeah, you can sprinkle whiskey mm -hmm. on food every, yeah, you can do that. But what's really exciting, as you mentioned, is pairings. Mm -hmm. So approach the category the same way you would um, the wine category. So yeah. you know when you're having a red wine and your wine's got loads of really big tannins? Yeah. You put that with meat. It's the same thing with whiskey. So there, there's lots of similarities there in terms yeah. of the pairings, yeah. And otherwise, uh, can you talk a little bit about uh, Robbie Burns Day? I mean, uh, there's the event on Sunday, on Saturday, Saturday I mean. Saturday, yeah. But absolutely. as well, I'm also just curious, which you're, you're hosting, I believe. Yeah. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the event, but also even just the celebration of Robbie Burns Day? I think it's, it's Robbie Burns, phenomenal. It's, yeah, he, he was one of, he's one, of, one of Scotland's greatest exports, aside from whiskey. <laughs> um, no, he's a very famous poet, yeah. um, written some incredible pieces of work. Well, um, Old Lang Syne, I don't think most people know who wrote it. Yeah. I mean, And then you've got the Address to the Haggis, yeah. which is something that we say every single Baron's Night. Um, and yeah, he was a Scottish poet, and the day really is there to celebrate his life and his works. And more than anything, it's for people to come together, come together over a whiskey, enjoy each other's company. It can be formal, informal. Hmm. Um, we're having a little bit more of a formal affair at Casa Loma, but I've done similarly Burns Nights with friends of mine from university where we've had haggis, neeps and tatties, we've had a bottle of whiskey open on the table, and just enjoying each other's company. And, you know, it's, I, I've lived in Scotland for eight years now, and Scottish people, we're so proud of Scotland. Hmm. It's such a beautiful country, and I'm very fortunate I travel a lot probably away about eight months of the year and wow. you know Scottish people are still proud of the country and it's the patriotism which is amazing so with these it's about everyone coming together Scots or not Scots hmm. just enjoy it and then we have haggis as well I love haggis so love I'm haggis. looking forward to it yeah yeah <laughs> Uh, last question is really, uh, what does it take to host an event like this? I mean, it, it seems like it must be, uh, to me it's intimidating, so what's it to you? To host an event? Like yes! The... Well, I mean, for Saturday night, it's, uh, it's a pretty big, big, pretty yeah. big event. No, I'm excited. I'm really excited about it, actually. The menu looks incredible. The, the lineup of the whiskeys, yeah. we got whiskey <laughs> cocktails to begin with as well. Um, I, I love doing this sort of stuff, yeah, and it's it's really nice, as I said, because it brings people together, and, right. you know, I've already had people on Twitter going, oh, we're really excited about Saturday night, and, and also, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's exciting. I am cool. very lucky, and, you know, I'm away now for five weeks, so it's like a, a little slice of home right. in Toronto, yeah. Nice. But, I mean, what it takes for people to host at home, haggis, bottle of whiskey, some friends. Nice. That's all you need. Well, thank you very much. You're